last time I was preaching, I preached on Mark chapter 4, uh, about the sower sows a word. And Jesus said, you know, that's the parable that you need to know. Um, if you don't know any parables, this is the parable you need to know. And um, so, you know, I was going over that a little bit, and uh, I, I read from um, Mark chapter 4, verse 19, where it says, Jesus said, the cares of this life and the, the lust of riches and the lust of other things comes in and chokes the word, and the word becomes unfruitful. And uh, so I really was, you know, just just seeking God for the past couple of days and asking him what, what, you know, he want me to preach to you. And because I always, I just always want something fresh from him. I always want something fresh to speak to, to you guys. And so uh, he just told me to preach on the cares of this life. I was like, I was like, okay. So he gave me this in um, in uh, First John chapter two. Let's start in verse fifteen. He said, "Love not the world, neither the things of the world. And if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him." It says, "For all the things of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it is of the world." So, in a world that we're living in, there's three things that constantly, uh, constantly distract us. And number one is, you know, like you said, it's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And, you know, John didn't write these things to the world, but he wrote them to the church. And there's one little thing that can really easily distract us. And I, I bet you 100% of us in this room has one. And that's a cell phone. <laughs> that's a cell phone. You know, and a cell phone's meant for communication. A lot of people, you know, use it for their, their daily activities, their daily lives. You know what I mean? They have files on there. They have pictures on there. They have their email on there. Uh, my wife even tells me that there's a calendar on there. Um, you know, there's, there's everything on there. There's, it's just, it's constantly at you, you know, even sometimes when you're watching TV or something like that, you know, I can hear my wife saying, just get off your phone, James. You know what I mean? But, you know, really, it's, it's a time where, okay, I spent time doing something else and I'm trying to catch up on something on my phone, but really, it's, it's a distraction. And, you know, we, me and Jordy were, were building his house and we were, at, uh, we were at the hardware store the other day picking up some materials and they asked, they said, do you want a receipt? And Jordan was like, no, that's fine. And uh, so anyways, if you get a receipt now, a receipt is, the transaction is faster in, as it goes to your email than it is if you're printing out a paper receipt. It's that fast. And, you know, ha having a phone, it doesn't require, it doesn't require us to think anymore. You know what I mean? When's the last time you really remembered someone's phone number? You know, um, everything is right on your phone. Like, you know, sometimes we're just, we're lost without it. But, you know, it's a worldly item, but it could be used for the good. And, you know, it has, it has the ability to, we have it right at the palm of our hands. We can look up anything online, Google, and it's right in the palm of our hands. And, you know, the Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, it says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And that's not knowledge really of the world, but it's knowledge of the Word of God. And, you know, God wants, uh, you know, people die and people are sick and stuff like that because they don't have a knowledge of, you know, who, who, who took our sins on the cross by His stripes were healed. And, uh, but the thing is, um, like I said, it's a worldly item, but, you know, it could be used for the good. So verse 17, it says, The world passes away. And the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God shall abide forever. Turn to uh, John chapter 16, verse 33. You guys have your Bibles tonight? Yeah. A paper Bible. <laughs> I love that you guys are old school like that. You know, paper Bible. So it's you know, I like paper receipts. You know, what I mean, when I go shopping for Heather at Christmas time, I like to keep the receipts because then, you know, she doesn't know what I bought her through email and stuff, right? Because they always ask me, "Do you have any? Do you have an email address?" I'm like, "No, no, I don't want to deal with that." But 
Don't get me wrong, I do have an email address, and I do keep up with time, so... <laughs> Anyways, verse 33, <laughs> this is Jesus... This is Jesus speaking. It says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace, and in the world you should have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. I wrote this down in my margin. It says, God never promised you a life without trials, but he promised you victory in the midst of the trials of life. He, he promised you victories, you know, in the trials of life. Like I said, you know, uh, Revelations 12, 11, you've overcome him by the blood of the lamb. It's the blood of the lamb that you've overcome him. And who's him? Satan. You know, you have the power over him. He doesn't have the power over you. But you know, one of us, we, we can't be ignorant of his devices. And one of his tactics, tactics and, you know, is to take our peace. And you know what? If he can take your peace, he can take you from the ability of you hearing God's voice clearly in your life. And he can take the ability away from the words sown into your heart. You know, he, he talks about that in Mark chapter 4, you know. And, um, but Mark chapter 4, he says, The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, you know, it, it, the deceitfulness, the riches, and the lust of other things, it comes in and what chokes the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And God's will for us is that we be fruitful and bear much fruit, you know. So a, a while back, I was... Uh, I was taking Pastor's bike for a ride, and um, anyways, we're out in Fall River towards uh, Lockview, and I picked his bike up there, and I might have told this story before, but it's like what Pastor Gary says, it's my hour, so <laughs> I'll say what I want to say. But um, so anyways, I picked up his bike, and we were taking it for an oil change, and I took it from Fall River all the way to Dartmouth on Main Street, and uh, I didn't even think, you know what I mean? I, I, I have my cell phone in my pocket here, and so, anyways, we're going down the highway, and somewhere along the lines, the, the, the phone fell out of my pocket. And uh, so, anyways, when I got to, you know, the bike shop and dropped my bike off and stuff like that, he said, I don't want to take you out for lunch and, or take you out for breakfast. So we went to breakfast, and I went looking for my phone because, you know, it's that little thing that just, it's, it always has to be on us, right? So, anyways, I went and looked for it, and um, we nowhere to be found. And, you know, I didn't even think twice. I was like, no, I, I, I just cast this care upon you, Lord. I just, I, I, I just didn't have any worries about it. And I just thought, I was like, you know what? It's just a phone. You know, but most important to me, what was on my phone was, you know, some of the contacts I had on there um, and some of the pictures that I had on there. So, so that was just really the only important things that I really wanted it back for. So anyways, I went back home after, you know, looking... We went for another drive, me and Pastor couldn't find anything. And I, I went home and Heather was like, so what do you want to do? Because we were going out to our friend's house. And uh, I said, well, let's just take one more drive. And uh, it, it, sometimes, it, you know, God gave you a, a significant other for a reason. And uh, so I listened to her that day and I said, okay, let's go for another drive. And so anyways... <laughs> It was pretty cool because we had our niece and nephew with us, and they get to see the whole testimony of this, of the Lord. And so, anyways, we're going down the highway, going down the highway, and, you know, and Heather goes, I think I've seen something. And so, anyways, sure enough, I, I, I stop right in the middle of the highway where it goes into, where we turn up to the, to, the, to the one side of the highway, and the other side goes straight up, and I stop right in the middle. And so, anyways, she gets out of the car, and sure enough, and uh the niece and nephew in the back. I said, did you see Auntie? Uh, did she have anything in her hands? And she's like, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. So anyway, sure enough, she come up to the car and she got in. She pulls it out right there, right? I was like, amazing. Amazing. Thank you, Lord. So that's one time you hear God's voice. And another time, well, <laughs> so... Heather's laughing because, you know, I went, to, uh, I went to a friend of mine's and he has this nice big uh, saltwater pool. And um, anyways, I, I had two phones on me. I had my work phone and my personal cell phone. And I needed my work phone on me because, you know, I was still working at the time. You, you know what I mean? And I had a, a, um, to wait for a call, whatever. So anyways, I go in. I was just about to get out of the car and I heard the Lord say, just leave your personal cell phone in the car. I was like, and I just didn't 
I wasn't obedient. You know what I mean? So I was like, oh, I'll just put it in my pocket. So that's what I did. Put it in my pocket, get my towel, put it on the, on the, on the table. I put my work phone there. Wasn't even thinking. My other phone was in my pocket. And sure enough, it went for, it went for a swim. <laughs> but the first thing I confessed was 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting your cares upon the Lord, for he's the one that cares for you. I said, Lord, it's just a phone, you know. So let's turn to 1 Peter 5, 7. Let's get our eyes back on the, on the word here. It's good to be in the word of God. So if you're there, 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, Casting all your cares upon him, for he's the one that cares for you. Verse 8, he says, Be sober and vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour, whom you resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Notice that you're not the only one that's going through something. It doesn't matter who you are. You, somebody's going through something. You know, the trials of our faith work as patience, and let patience have its perfect work. We're here to encourage each other. And that's why we come to church on Thursday nights. You know what I mean? To be built up in the Word. You know what I mean? And to, you know, be a, a good student or a good disciple of Jesus Christ. So let's keep reading. Uh, it says, verse 10, he says, But the God of all grace has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, that after you have suffered for a while, make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, and settle. So either way, whatever you go through, Whatever you go through, we win. It's that eternal glory. We win. No matter what. We're not in competition with anybody else. We all have eternal life with Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? If you're born again, you're saved, and you know Jesus Christ is your Lord. So yeah, you know what I mean? And you know what? It's casting your cares upon him. It's better. It's easier to walk by faith and trust God than it is to have all that care and all that worry and all that anxiety on your shoulders. It's easy to walk by faith. And walking by faith is just, really, it's just believing Him, right? So, the cares of this world, the devil knows that he's, uh, he's walking around, he's waiting for us to get off guard. You know, Hebrews chapter 12, you can skip over a few chapters before. Hebrews chapter 12. In verse 1, it says, For Wherefore, seeing that we are compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that do easily besets us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, skip down. I don't want to read all this, but skip down to, um, let's see, the verse 6. It's for, for whom the Lord loves, he chasteneth, and he scourges every son whom he receives. And if you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. For what a son is whom the father chasteneth not. But if you be without chastisement, whereof you are all partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. He says, furthermore, we have fathers of our flesh, which corrected us and gave us reverence, gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto our father of spirits and live? He says, for they verily for a few days chastened us after our own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Verse 11 says, now we are chasten chastening uh, for this present seemeth joyous. It, it seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards that yields peaceable, peaceable fruits of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So what he's trying to say here, is that, you know, going back to verse 1, it says, let us lay aside every weight and sin that does easily beset us. And, you know, sometimes we think, uh, this is what some people think grace is. I wrote this down in my margin. You know, I don't want to point out someone's fault, but I just want to point them to Jesus and let Jesus take care of it. But, you know, that's kind of a false thing because, you know, if we're doing something wrong, how are we know that we're doing something wrong? Unless someone comes up to us and corrects us with the love of God and says, you know, you're doing this wrong. 
And what I'm really trying to say is that, is that if you're carrying care, you're carrying sin. And sin is just, it's, it's, it's not good for you to carry. It's not, you're not meant as a, as a child of God to carry care, to carry sin. And Jesus carried that on the cross for you. You know, and he can only steal from you when you take the care upon yourself. Satan can only do that. You know, we, we read that in John chapter 10. You know, he only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give you life and what? Having it in abundance. You know, it's, you know, really it's getting your eyes off the world, word and getting your eyes on the world. You know, like I said in, in Mark chapter 4, the, 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 uh, the cares of this world, it chokes the word and becomes unfruitful. And God wants us to be what? Fruitful and bear much fruit. Philippians chapter 4, back a few, back a few, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Are you getting anything out of this? Yeah. I got, still got some more to give. So verse 6, and, and I know these are very familiar scriptures, scriptures, but don't get familiar with the Word of God. Let it become fresh to you and new to you every, every single time you read it. It says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. You know, some people come to church on... Christmas, they come to church on Easter, they come to church on Thanksgiving, and you know, and all, all those things are good. And some people just pray at those times. You know what I mean? Some people just, you know, they pray over their meal at Christmas or they pray over their meal at Easter or Thanksgiving, you know, and that's that's good. You know, they're acknowledging God, but it's not God's best and God's will for them. You know, and but Paul, the Apostle Paul is not talking about a holiday here. And even though that I'm, I'm thankful for holidays, and I don't know what holiday is coming up next, because I know every holiday, you know, whether it be Christmas, Easter, or Thanksgiving, Pastor Paul makes his stuffing, and I really enjoy his stuffing. So, but he's not talking about Thanksgiving here. But really, you know, what he's talking about, Thanksgiving is an act of worship, and it should be in one's life every single day, in every single way. Verse 7. It says, and the peace of God that passes all understanding should keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. The peace we have with God is directly connected to our prayer life. And our prayer is not just about our confession of faith of the Word of God, but it's a constant communication with us talking to the Lord. We talk and we listen. You know, that's communication, that's prayer. You know, and also, you know, like I said, confession of the Word of God is very important. But you know what? I've always said to people, I said, you know, talk to God like you're talking to your friend. You know what I mean? He knows everything about you, but, you know, talk to him. You know, let him know what you're going through. You know what I mean? He's there for you. All right? You know, pastor used to always say uh, this, 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 um, this saying, he says, persevere past the persecution and penetrate the promise. Persevere past the pen persevere past the persecution to penetrate the promise. The promises of God. What well, what promise are we trying to, to get? We're, we're trying to get the promise of what? Peace. Because that's what we want to get. So peace comes after we pray and hear from God and do what he says. And you know, and sometimes that peace is hard because of the distractions of this life. That's why he said, keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Verse 8. He said, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, and whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there's any virtue, if there's any praise, he said, think on these things. So he said eight times in verse 8, he said, think on those things. So eight is the, numer the number for eight. The number eight, me uh, the meaning for number eight is a new beginning. And God gives you a fresh start. He gives you a new beginning each time. Um, every time you, you think of things that uh, you're, you're going to take care of, he gives you the opportunity to give that to him every single time. He gives you the fresh start every single time. And because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, if any man be in Christ, 
He's a new creation. He says, old things have passed away. And what? All things become new. He gives you the opportunity every single time, whenever that care comes upon us, to give it to him. Isn't that good? And, you know, I like to write, th- and all this stuff that I'm, I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to you, just God's been showing me, but I put this note down in my Bible a while back, and I think it just goes really well with uh, what I'm preaching about. Um, it says, when we truly have peace with God, we stop needing answers for everything going on in the world, and we can simply just trust him for what is to come. Isn't that good? Yeah. Simply just trust him for the things that are to come. You know, and don't be thinking on things, what's going to happen, you know, when's Jesus coming back, blah, blah, blah. No, just keep your, keep your eyes focused on the Lord and keep seeking him and his way of doing things. So when distractions come, he said, think on these things. And, it's just, and if you're writing anything down, I know some of you guys like to write things down, write this down. Peace will come in the consistency of you applying the word and not conforming to the world. Say that again. Peace will come in the consistency of you applying the word and not conforming to the world. Conforming to the world, like you said, math, uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Is, uh, you know, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? Renewing of your mind, right? That you can prove what's good and acceptable in the perfect will. Matthew chapter, chapter 6. One of my favorite uh, chapters in the Bible. Matthew chapter 6. Start at verse um, 24. He said, No man can serve two masters, for either he'll hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold on to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Verse 25, he said, Therefore, take no thought for your life what you should eat, you shall eat or what you should drink, nor for your body what you should put on. Is life more than meat and you know, your body more than raiment? He said, Behold, the fowls of the air. It says, Neither do they reap nor gather um, into barns, yet your heavenly Father takes care of them and feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Little side note, the animal kingdom is not governed by sowing and reaping. The only, the only ones who are governed by sowing and reaping is me and you. Right? It says, which of you taking thought can add one cubit to his stature? It says, and why take thought for raiment? He says, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow and they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. He said, wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you little faith? We even seen that even with the fires, you know? One day it could be luscious and beautiful, and the next day it could be scorched up, you know? And uh, ultimately, he, you know, he says here to, to trust him. So in verse 31, he says, he says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, what you shall eat and what you should drink, or how you should be clothed. For all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. It says, Take no thought, therefore, for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought of its things of itself, for sufficient unto the day, and the day, day is evil. Five times Jesus mentioned, uh, Take no thought. Five times he mentions, Take no thought. And five is the number for grace. He's giving you the grace and every opportunity to cast in care, give that care to him. He's giving you the grace every single time. To give that care to him. And you know, the Bible says in, like we read it before in Math, uh, 1 Peter 5, 7, he says, casting all your cares upon him, for he's the one that what cares for you. But you know, we read those scriptures, and but sometimes you got to look at the scripture before that. You know, so what's verse 6 say? Well, verse 6, say, six says, uh, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, and he shall exalt you in due time. So really, it's, it's all about you humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he'll, he'll take care of your needs. Turn a few pages over to Matthew chapter 11. 
verse 28. This is Jesus speaking. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, for I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely of heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus knew that we would face obstacles and distractions that would affect our mental health. And you know, the thing is, if we just go to him and let him carry our care, it takes the weight off us. It takes the weight off our minds. It's like, you know, when he said, he said uh, in verse 29, he says, and you shall find rest for your souls. You know, I remember during 2020, when this is before uh, everything happened, I, I was seeking the Lord and I said, Lord, what do you want to say to me this year? And he just brought me to Matthew chapter 11 and he, and he told me just to stay humble. And I was like, okay. And then, you know, a couple months later, everything started to happen and, and uh, I just, I chewed on that word um, and I just grabbed the hold of it and I made it my, my, my revelation. I said, Lord, no, I'm going to stay humble through everything that's going on. And, you know, it was the hardest things that I had to go through and, you know, even mentally, but, you know, I always uh, did Romans 20, 8.28 too. The, the Bible says that all things work together for our good because we love God and we're called according to our, His purpose. Everything works out for the believer, right? And everything works out for you too because you are the believers. But, you know, even in the midst of trouble and stress, you can have rest. And uh, so there's a few things that, you know, stress and care causes, and I just want to read these to you. And if, you, if these hit any point in your life, um, you know, God, God wants you to deal with it tonight. Sleeplessness, emotional suffering, tiredness, depression, insecurity, loneliness, and discouragement, fear and worry. All those are just products of stress and products of care. And God doesn't want you to carry that. And, you know, the root of it, the root of it is found in a troubled heart. The root of it's found in a troubled heart. And you know what's a troubled heart? Well, Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 1, he said, let your heart, what? Not be troubled. And really, a troubled heart is an unbelieving heart. You know? And you and me, we're not the only ones who, who are going through things. We're not the only one that's taking care upon our, on our own lives. You know what I mean? Even the disciples went through this. And if we turn over to Luke chapter 24... Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Luke 24 is just the last chapter before the Gospel of John. And it says, as, they, as Jesus, or sorry, as they spoke, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Hmm. But they were terrified and frightened, supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why, are you th why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet, and it is I myself, handle me not, or handle me, and see. He said, The Spirit hath not the flesh and the bones, and you see me here. And when he had spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while, while yet they believed not for joy and wondered, and wondered, they believed not for joy and they wondered, Having a troubled heart will always steal you joy. You know, like I read from Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, uh, you know, it says, be careful for nothing, but do everything by prayer and supplication, with like your request be known, made known unto God. But what's verse 4 say? Verse 4 says, rejoice in the Lord. And this again, I say rejoice. You know, when your heart's troubled and when you're carrying care, you have no joy. And you know, sure enough, the disciples were going through this. And he said unto them, this is what Jesus said, uh, Have ye any meat? And he gave them a piece of meat, a boiled fish, and a piece of honeycomb. And he took it, and he ate it. And uh, he said unto them, These are the words that I spoke unto you while I was with you, that all these things must be fulfilled, fulfilled which was written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And then he opened the eyes of their understanding, that they might understand the Scriptures. It's at that moment that Jesus freed them from their thoughts of worry and care, thoughts of trouble in their hearts and their minds. 
And uh, verse 46, and he said unto them, it is written that thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are all witness of these things. What Jesus came to preach, you know, he came to preach, you can read it in the Gospels, um, he, he came to preach repentance in the kingdom of heaven. And Luke says he, you know, when Luke, let's turn Luke 4.18, a couple scriptures over. I can quote this by her, but, and we've heard it a lot, but let's hear it again. Let's hear it again for the first time. Everything's fresh, everything's new. Jesus said in verse 18, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering the sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach to what? <laughs> the acceptable year of the Lord. So we can see in the gospels that he preached the repentance, he preached the kingdom of God. And really repentance, all that it really is, is, is my definition is like, is turning away from the things that turn you away from Christ. That's all it is. Turn away from the things that turn you away from Christ. And, uh, but really, you know, what I want to, what I really wanted to get through to you tonight was, you know, um, if you're dealing with care, if you're dealing with worry, anxiety, God wants to give you peace. He wants you to be free of those things. And I'm preaching to myself, you know, so I'm not just preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. And it's good to remind ourselves of the Word of God and remind us of those scriptures that, that Jesus talked about. But, you know, if you're dealing with those things, you know, like I said, if you're dealing with sleeplessness, tiredness, uh, emotional suffering, depression, insecurity, loneliness, discouragement, fear, worrying, God wants you to be free of those things. Why does he want you to be free? So you can, when you go and have the ability and the time to pray for someone else that's dealing with those things, that God can free them. Because, you know, the most important is that God cares about their salvation. God wants them saved. You know what I mean? And if we're a witness to, if we're a witness to them, you know, and we show them who Jesus really is, and God wants them free. So if you're dealing with that tonight, I would be honored if I pray with you and I'll you know, Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 says, if two agree on touching anything, it shall be done. So I'll be your two tonight. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. We hope this message has encouraged you in your relationship with the Lord. For more information and ministry resources, we invite you to visit our website at www.newcovenantchurch.ca. We look forward to you joining us next time as we continue to live victoriously.